Amazement Square is a children's museum for kids of all ages. It's a place where you can learn, discover, and play all day. Captain a boat down the James River. Paint on the wall. Explore and walk through the heart. Rock out on stage in a band. That's just some of the fun waiting for you at Amazement Square in downtown Lynchburg. Come and explore it yourself. It really is amazing. Hello and welcome to Lynchburg Live. I'm your host, Linda Smith. Tonight we're, is part two of our focus and highlighting of Amazement Square. We hope you were with us last week and could see the first part of this show. My guests tonight are Ashley Carroll, Director of Marketing, and Ashley was with us last week. Uh, with her tonight is Amanda Fortner. She's Director of Operations for Amazement Square. Welcome to Lynchburg Live. Thank you for having Thank us you. again. All right. We know what you do. <laughs> Amanda, tell us what you do. What's involved with your job? Yes, um, I wear a few different hats as the Director of Operations. I mostly oversee the, the galleries, make sure that we're prepared for the day, staff know what's going to happen, um, as well as oversee some programs, make sure that we're prepared for anything we have upcoming to make sure we can run smoothly. And I'm told that you know a lot about these exhibits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been at the museum for um, a little over five years now. so. I have some experience with them. I started out in the galleries and worked my way up through um, to operations. So, you know, in doing research about, with this about this show, I was really interested in the Amazement Tower. Oh yeah. Could you tell us what that is? <laughs> yeah, um, the Amazement Square Tower is actually um, all of our. It's our elevator, our light upstairs, and the tunnels and slides that we have throughout the museum. Um, we included the elevator and the stairs so that no matter what your abilities are, you can still take part in it. So our elevator is glass. You can still see everything as you go up, so you're never taken away from the exhibits, and you can always experience them. Um, but then we have tunnels and slides that will lead you all throughout the museum. Um, there is an observation deck where you can see out over to the river, and then you can actually go from fourth floor down to first without ever coming out of the tower, just doing tunnels and slides and cargo nets. There's a zip line, <laughs> all sorts of fun stuff. I ran into a woman when I was there at, at your reception recently who was probably my age. She came sort of falling out of one of the tunnels. <laughs> and she said, I should never have worn these shoes <laughs> trying to climb around in this tunnel. But it was the tunnel that goes up to the observation area. Oh, yeah. And is that the only way you can get up there? Yes, yes. it is. Um, it looks like a slide, but there's actually little foot placeholders. Right. Um, throughout it so you have to climb up and then you can there's um the view binder at the top so you can actually see out into the river. I think that's wonderful and I you know, uh, certainly applaud her for yeah. doing that because she looked like <gasps> when she came out of there. Well, yeah, I've done it one time. I was it is not for it is a challenge for adults. You have to be in I shape. Can, well, I know it would have been a challenge for me. <laughs> All right, we we touched uh, something else I wanted. You have a climbing wall? No. You don't have the climbing wall? No. It, we it, what we consider the tower, that's the tallest one, is the, the tower, okay. the tunnels and slides. All right. Yeah. Uh, we hit a little bit on the, the red barn, and I think that's probably one of my favorite exhibits mm -hmm. because of the cow. I just think oh, the yeah. cow is so <laughs> cool. Uh, but the Indian exhibit, mm -hmm. I, tell us about that because that was very intricate and, you know, different places around the room oh, yeah. teaching different things to these kids. Yeah, the, the Indian Gallery um, focuses mostly currently on the Monacan Indians um, because they're native to Lynchburg. Um, so we actually brought in um, an artist and she did the mural for us and it actually shows the Monacans through time on the mural, um, which is really cool, um, especially towards the end. I know you mentioned in the last summit about just the faces at the end of it and that actually she didn't, she purposely didn't finish coloring them in because they are still living and thriving in Lynchburg. She wanted to leave it incomplete, which I thought was just an amazing touch yeah, that, that she put really to is. it. Uh, but they get to come in and just experience life as an Indian. So they get to play in the Ati. We have a little fi fake fire pit. They can go through like the oral history and tell stories, um, do drum circles, um, all sorts of really cool things in there. And hides were, were dry. Oh, I yeah. Was, yeah, was the neat. cactail mats and then the hides for, from some different animals we have. Have something telling about why those pictures aren't complete. I think that's really, really interesting. Yeah, um, I don't know if it actually is written up there currently or not. No, but actually the Indian Island is getting ready to get a little bit of a facelift mm -hmm. and they want to represent some of the other tribes that were a part of this region. So if the funding comes through, we are going to be giving that exhibit a little bit of a facelift and renovation. So. Now you do switch these out, these exhibits out. I heard that the, the uh, heart 
Mm -hmm. It was not going to be there much longer. That is right. Some of them are permanent. Some of them have been there since the doors opened. And some of them are what we consider changing galleries. Um, for example, one of the changing galleries that was just taken down was um, the Mediterranean Gallery, Ancient Greece and Mediterranean, I believe. And Egypt is coming back, which is something yep. that we heard a lot of demand for. <laughs> so Egypt is yes. coming back. It should open hopefully in the next few weeks. And you can mummify your pet. You can <laughs> visit the mummy. You can, uh, yeah, it's really interesting, but it's really all about the life and afterlife on the Nile. Um, that is one of our changing galleries. Another one of the changing galleries is what we have Bugs University in right now. And it has been open a little over than a year. And it probably, will, too, will see a change come January. It has been a really popular exhibit. And it's all about life as a bug and why they're important to our ecosystem and our environment. Um, you can even pollinate your own honey and flower. And That's wonderful. Yeah, it's, yeah. Really, it's really amazing. So those are changing galleries. Um, some of the permanent galleries that we're known for, such as the James River on the James. Um, Indian Island has been there as well. And um, the, the Heart Gallery, yeah. which is the center gallery. And it's called um, Your Amazing Body. And we actually have a heart that you can travel through, which I think is just phenomenal. It's one of my favorite exhibits. When you break open the doors of the heart in the center of the heart, the blood actually starts flowing above you. And we have lights right. that go around and footprints on the floor that tell you which way the blood is flowing. And it's wonderful to see children running through it. And they're learning something without ever realizing it. That exhibit has kind of seen its day, and uh, we're trying to respond to the needs of our community, and adopting a healthier lifestyle full of balance seems to be more in the forefront. So we have been working and in development with a health advisory committee full of uh, community members, doctors, and um, teachers, and all kinds of other members who are interested in health that are helping us come up with the Balance Healthy Mind and Body exhibit. Um, through the support of the Center Foundation, and we just recently received an IMLS grant, which is the Institute of Museum and Library Sciences, Wonderful. which is a federal grant, which is a huge achievement for an organization here in Lynchburg, that um, those two fundings will help us uh, open this new exhibit next year. You know, I've wanted to get back to the river exhibit. Yes. Because I think that's so fascinating that you start at one end, <laughs> you can put a boat in the river, it shows the different I guess tributaries or yeah we have the canal version as well as like the rapid side um, and it, we actually specifically put it on the fourth floor so that as you're playing with it you can look out the window and see the actual James River um, so we did model it just to be exactly like the James River um, so we have some locks so you can see um, how your boat would travel down the river what's the safest route um, you can learn how to, to work the lock system um, to get your boat safely to Lynchburg um, and once you get to Lynchburg, you can actually make it rain on the city. That's mm -hmm. just, I thought raining was, <laughs> yeah. that was really. The kids love it. They're, they're like, you know, very excited to see, are they going to get wet? Because you go over the whole water cycle with them. Um, and so they're excited because we have clouds throughout. So they're like, am I going to get wet? And you're like, no, it's going to rain on the city. They're like, okay. And so they get really excited when it actually starts. And so. then you can move from that exhibit to an actual replica mm -hmm. of bateau. Yes. Mm -hmm. which, which is neat. You want Tell them about that. Oh yeah, the bateau we have um, is actually it's the same width of the bateau. It's only half of the length, um, so it could fit in our exhibit space. And they can start a little video where it'll make it look like they're traveling down the James River, headed to Richmond down a bateau. They get to put on the period garb um, and work with the um, the paddle and make sure they can safely get to their camping site for the night. All right, now the rock star experience. <laughs> Tell me about that. Yes, um, Rockstar has definitely been one of the most popular exhibits that we've put in in the last few years um, because it takes a game that kids are already used to, um, such as a Guitar Hero and Rock Band, um, but we've made it on a giant scale. So instead of playing on your television at home, we actually have a giant drop-down screen that comes down um, and we put in. We have a few different game versions. Mostly we play Lego Rock Band. Um, the kids really like that one, has songs that they know. Um, and so you get used to hearing the kids get really into it. Um, that one we're going more with learning performance. We have already an exhibit on musical instruments where they can play real instruments and learn more about music. And this one they're going to learn to be comfortable in front of people, put on a performance and just have a lot of fun doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll hear kids, you know, sing in. And we have little percussion instruments for the younger kids that don't really understand the, the guitar because they're a little complicated until you get used to them. Uh, so we have percussion instruments for the younger kids to play as well. And I noticed you have a green screen mm -hmm. that, yes. that the kids can our hope is to one day um, 
make the green screen to where we can actually record your video and have you perform it in different places. Um, so we did go ahead and already put in the green screen, uh, but we haven't quite opened that part of it yet. Is uh, the rock star, is that exhibit kind of like a large Wii? Um, it's, it's through an Xbox, mm -hmm. um, so it is a lot like a Wii, um, but it's the game Rock Band. We just have a few different versions that we can put in for the kids to play. Right. Now, you all partner with a number of organizations, mm -hmm. and uh, you said Centra Health, and that they provide the Amazing Body exhibit. The Centra Foundation. Centra Foundation, okay. Yes. And, you know, that has to be a tremendous help. Help. I, I understand that Genworth mm -hmm. partners with you guys. Genworth Foundation is a great supporter um, of us. I mean, they're, they're a great neighbor to have in Lynchburg, and they're also a great downtown um, corporate partner of ours. They support our sponsored admission and outreach programs. Um, we touched on them in last week's segment about what sponsored admission is, and it's it's our ability. It's towards our mission to try to make Amazement Square available to people of all backgrounds and abilities, no matter what their economic level may be. So we offer family fun night with reduced admission, three dollars or pay what you can on the second Saturday of every month. And that is part of sponsored admission as well as other outreach and um, offering school programs who can't afford to come, offering them a reduced cost. And um, Genworth is very generous and helps us meet our mission. That's great. It is. I mean, to be able, I, th I think that the, in doing these shows, the city of Lynchburg and the people in Lynchburg mm. are so generous oh, where very, education and is, is concerned. Very generous, extremely generous community. Um, I actually work directly with many of our corporate partners and they are just truly amazing. It, it does inspire me to keep going and know that they're investing in the educational future. Um, we have, and what I like to tell people too is that corporate partnership doesn't have to come from a financial gift. It can also be an in-kind gift, services or um, just volunteer time and um, supplies, all of those kinds of things are just as valuable to a nonprofit organization such as Amazement Square. And you do need volunteers. Oh yeah, so we um, love to have volunteers come out. Um, we have a variety of different areas for volunteers to help us. Um, we have special events we have going on throughout the year uh, where we recruit volunteers to come help us, you know, from everything from setting up to tearing down That's to actually great. facilitating it with us. Um, but we actually have volunteers that come and work on the floor. They can um, play with the kids, interpret the exhibits, as well as get involved in our educational programming, help with the school programs. Um, so we have wonderful opportunities for volunteers. Um, our biggest volunteer project we have is the City Arts Mural that we've been doing um, right. since 2005. It's been a great <laughs> time having volunteers from all over, from people bringing like, Girl Scout troops. Um, we've had volunteers from the different colleges in town. Ginworth has brought volunteers. Even Coles has sent out some volunteers. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so it's been a great experience over the last few years with that. You know, we've got some pictures, but before I start, I show the pictures. I wanted to touch on uh, that you all have received the Christopher and Dana Reeve I Foundation Quality of Life Grant. Can you tell us about that? I mean, I think that everybody knows who Christopher Reeve Oh, absolutely. Was. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't know Superman and, and love Superman? Um, the Christopher and Dana Reeve uh, Foundation Quality of Life Grant is something Amazing Square was luckily enough to receive um, two years ago, actually. We have what we call the Everyone is Special program, which is a program we've had since before this grant. This grant just helped us further that mission. Everyone is Special is focused on providing children of special needs a place to come and, and enjoy the exhibits with adaptive equipment. Great. We work with the Laurel Regional School here in the, in the area and they bring their students on Mondays, which is a day that the museum is closed to the general public. It's a great opportunity for these students and their aides to come in and enjoy the exhibits with the adaptive equipment they have. Uh, we have equipment that they can paint with on a wheelchair. We have equipment that they can um, work with a keyboard and all kinds of other adaptive pieces. The, the grant helps us fund their transportation, our staff time to actually go visit those students prior to their visit. That's wonderful. And the adaptive equipment. So you, you really have met these children before they come and that has to make it more comfortable for them. And that's a very important part of it yeah. is to have our staff go and visit with these students so that they're not walking into a strange environment and meeting strange people. It's, it's, it's great for these, these students to be able to also get out and experience life in a normal way 
Um, it helps give confidence to their families and to the students themselves. How many people do you have on staff? Do you know? Uh, we have about 30 people on staff, um, including all of our back office development staff um, and the people that work on the floor. You brought some pictures and we yeah. want to see these pictures. <laughs> right. So Phil, if you'll put these pictures up on the screen, we'll talk about what they are. Uh, this is our Raceways exhibit. Um, in this exhibit, they're actually learning physics. Um, and a lot of times they don't realize they're quite learning physics until they're getting home talking about it. Uh, but they can send golf balls down some ramps that we've already created, as well as that middle structure, they can create their own ramp so they can control the acceleration and slope on themselves. And that's a long exhibit too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's on the James, um, and that is one of our gallery staff who is interacting with the children and floating the boats down the river. Um, that is actually Josh. He is one of our more beloved staff members who recently won the Hospitality Tourism Star of the Year Award earlier How this year. How wonderful for yeah. him. Yeah. Um, that is a picture of Rockstar. Um, that's actually from around the drum set, so you can see the screen that they're seeing the game on. Uh, we have some stools out so parents can sit down and watch the game with them. There's a television above them so they can see what they're looking at as well, um, as well as the, um, you can kind of see in the background of the music area where they can play some real instruments as well. This is Bugs University, or a portion of it. This is one of the changing galleries that I mentioned, and that is become an ant for a time period where you can actually uh, those are grippers, the orange pieces in his hands are grippers so you can actually suction yourself and grip to get up just much like a, like a bug. And then there's a slide and a tunnel kind of rope kind of in there where you can kind of... So it's an ant farm. I see an ant <laughs> yeah. over on the side. Yes. Where else would kids get to be part of an ant farm? <laughs> yeah. a, a human size and, ant farm. And down under that really tall grass. That's right. Yes. And this is a picture from Egypt. Um, like she mentioned, Egypt is coming back here um, in the next little bit. Um, and so this um, is actually right near the mummy, um, so you can actually see one of the mummies that we have. And this time we're going to have um, some animal ones as well, um, so we're going to focus more on the afterlife than we had in the past. This is your amazing body and the heart that I was speaking of earlier. Um, the lights above are simulating the blood flow and uh, the little girl that's about to run through the doors is what makes the heart start beating. And uh, it's pretty fun, it's really interesting. It's a left ventricle and a right ventricle. Um, this is actually a picture from one of the Laurel School programs that we've done, yeah. um, where they, um, they're actually in our warehouse, um, but we've put up the adaptive um, components on the wheelchairs, and they are painting um, a relatively large mural <laughs> that they um, actually get to take with them as well. That is our kids' warehouse. Uh, the kids' warehouse is our museum shop. We have components in it that you actually find in our galleries, along with toys you can't find in other places. Um, we really try to take some time and find um, presents and holiday um, novelties that you can't find at your local stores. Um, and we have staff members trained to also be able to help you come in if you say you want to get a present for a three-year-old. They can show you these are the things that are really popular among that age group right now. So it's a, it's a great little store, and we're actually going to um, have it open all for Christmas as well with some extended hours on Thursdays and Fridays. Do you have Santa Claus visit you all? We have, uh, actually Santa does come to Amazement Square, but we have the Children's Holiday Festival, which is a celebration of all holidays. And Santa does join us for Pancake Breakfast. That is on December the 8th. And there are two seatings available um, to choose from. The, the ticket price is, is pretty reasonable. It's $15 a person. Oh, that and is reasonable. it includes a photo with Santa, which if you've been to the mall lately and had your picture with right. Santa, it is $15. So this includes holiday crafts and cookie decorating, story time, um, shopping at the kids' warehouse, a special holiday gift shop, and your photo with Santa you get to take with you. Um, it's wonderful. So. I mean, December it the eighth, like a whole day for kids. It and is it's something to, to be doing constantly. It is, and they um, then that ticket price also includes admission to the museum. So you can have pancake breakfast with Santa and then head over to the museum. Um, tickets go on sale November first on the Amazement Square website. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, this is a photo from one of our birthday parties. We offer birthdays um, for children of all ages. You can come in and do a birthday party, um, and, and we have a staff member in there with you the whole time. Um, and they actually lead them in a craft. Um, that's what they're kind of doing in that first table is they're going to decorate their own party hats or crowns. 
Um, our parties are awesome in that the parents, it's a place for them to be able to bring kids and their family members to where they don't have to do as much. So we do all of the setup and cleanup to where the parents get to come in and have a good time. They don't have to worry about all the logistics. We take care of all do of that for you. Do they bring cakes? We actually provide to. the cupcakes. Um, you can bring your own, um, but we do provide cupcakes with the cost. And now birthday parties, is that just about the only thing you do or do you, are there, is it available for other kinds of parties? We do uh, facility rentals of the museum, of the warehouse. Um, all of our space is actually available for facility rentals. We've held board meetings for corporate partners, all the way up to cocktail parties, holiday parties. A couple wedding receptions. Wedding receptions in the warehouse. And um, we do facility rentals of all kinds. So, um, and we do what we we do a lot of team building activities mm -hmm. as well. We call them buggy businesses. Cool. <laughs> and they're really geared towards a lot of the corporations of the area that can come and have it as meeting space, but do team building activities. We have a Habitat for Humanity house in the museum Great. that we can actually take apart and then teamwork. They can put it back together. So that's just one of the options. So there's a lot of opportunity to actually rent out the museum. It's a cool place to have a cocktail. So party. you can yeah. rent the whole museum. You can. Yes. We actually also have across the street from the museum a screen, a movie screen, that um, in the summer we provide free films to the general public. But we can also rent out that movie screen if you wanted to show a movie and invite your friends and our company or something of that sort. Now that's that's River Flicks. River Flicks is yeah is the movie screen across the street, but it is also available for rent. Great. So. We're out of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What all do you have on your calendar, <laughs> upcoming in events? It is busy season for us. Um, we finished the Amazing Mile at the end of September. We had 750 children running in downtown Lynchburg. It was about 5,000 people in downtown Lynchburg. It was really amazing. And we just finished the Ugly Bug Ball, which was our biggest fundraiser of the year. We also, um, tonight, finished the Bugs and Hisses Ball, which is our Halloween event, costume contest, and science. And we are gearing up for the Children's Holiday Festival um, on December 8th, which I already mentioned. And then we're also gearing up for a few other things. On Black Friday, we're going to have extended hours. So the day after Thanksgiving, we're going to be open from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. Um, in November, we also have two Saturday programs, which um, one is, is geared towards healthy giving. Um, everything this year is geared towards fun and fit. So healthy giving is going to be about how do we give back to our community. And then all the month of December, we're going to have extended hours. The museum is going to be open later than, than ever from, on Thursdays and Fridays from 10 until 7 p.m. That's wonderful. All right. If somebody wants to volunteer with you, yes. how do they go about doing that? Yes. Um, all they have to do is they can either call the museum or they can send me an email. Um, it comes straight to me, and I will work with everybody to fill their availability. Um, my email address is amanda at amazementsquare.org. All right. You have a website. We do. Yes. www.amazementsquare.org. Um, we also have a Facebook page, which is very right. popular, and we, we have about 3,000 fans. So that is facebook.com slash amazementsquare. All right. This is a personal question. What does working in a place like this mean <laughs> to both of you? Uh, it means a lot. I have loved my time at Amazement Square. I actually started a little over five, year ago, five years ago as a volunteer. Um, when I was in college, we um, had to volunteer um, at least 20 hours a semester, and I fell in love with the place. Um, it was so much fun. I worked the paint box and just really enjoyed working with the kids. I knew I wanted to work with kids long term and just find a way to make them feel special. Um, and so I was able to come on board and work in the galleries for a few years. Um, and now I work in the back to make sure to help with the planning, make sure that we're, we're operating. Um, but this is not a job you could do if you, if you didn't have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. I'm um, sure. And it's truly an amazing experience. And the people you get to work with and just seeing the change um, in kids and how much they love it. There's not a day that goes by that a kid doesn't at least, you know, just come up to you and be like, I just did this and it was awesome. And you're like, I'm glad you like it. I mean, right. even from rock band, you hear them sing mm -hmm. the same songs, <laughs> but they get so into it. You're in your office like, oh. I love Kung Fu fighting. This song is great. <laughs> Just because of how into it they get um, yeah. to come and experience it. So. It, yeah. it has to be rewarding. Yeah. It truly is. I left the, the for-profit world about four years ago um, and worked for a nonprofit out west before I worked for Amazement Square here in Lynchburg. And um, I learned that working for a nonprofit, while you may wear many hats, 
Um, I like getting out of bed in the morning. I like going to work every day and feeling like I make a difference. And there's something to be said about investing in our educational oh. uh, youth in this area and trying to help build a, for the next generation. Without a doubt. Yeah. If you had an opportunity to say one thing to somebody who's never seen Amazement Square, never heard of it, what would you say? I would say to come on down. Um, you know, come in even if you don't have a lot of time. We'll give you a tour of the museum um, just so you can see it before you want to bring your family down. Um, it's so hard to describe everything we have, so come out and see it. We, we do so much and it's so much fun. Bright colors, mm -hmm. you, you can't leave there and not be happy. Um, I would say you'll never forget it. You, it's not a place that you will walk out of and not remember that you've been there. It's the kind of place that your children will beg you to go back to, whether they call it the bug place <laughs> or they call it the square. And we have many different names, but it's unforgettable. Well, I thank you both for being on here. I, I mean, this has been such a fun show to do and to research and to go down there and enjoy it myself. Ashley, thank you for being thank with you. me twice. Amanda, thank you for being here tonight. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show and this two-part series on Amazement Square. It's a truly amazing place and if you have an opportunity, please go and try to see all the exhibits. You'll love the cow. <laughs> okay, my next show will feature domestic violence prevention. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Happy Halloween. Good night.